Hello, good evening. Hello, hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Carlos Vladimir. How are you? Um, okay, I see Tony, I see Maris, I see Pablo, I see Mariam. Okay, guys, so I've been having some issues with the internet. In case you don't uh, probably listen to me, please let me know, okay? So let me see. How are you? How about your day? How was it? Good, so, so, tiring, relaxing, very busy. How was your day? No, you cannot listen to me. No me escuchan. No le escuchamos, teacher. No sé si usted. Yes, me yes. Como que su micrófono estuviera apagado, pero. Mm. Yo sí le escucho perfectamente. Okay, and the other ones? Yes, I, can hear, I cannot hear you, teacher. Tony, okay. Um, maybe Emerson, Carlos, Pablo, Marian, or Mauricio pueden escuchar. Hey, people. Somebody else listening to the teacher. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me, Carlos? No. Yeah. Yes, ah. I can hear. I can hear you, teacher. At the beginning, yes, I did. I did listen to you, but right now, no. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Oh. Okay, guys, so um, let me see. All of you can hear me? Yes. Okay, so yes. I think that probably he was having some issues with, I don't know, maybe with something, right? Okay, guys, welcome once again. Uh, we are going to start with today's class. And for today's class, we have the following agenda. So we have the warm up, then we are going to move to grammar. Um, we are going to talk about indirect questions. Um, We're going to cover unit three. Which is from... right now, no. Yeah, I think that he cannot listen to us. Juan? No, he can. Um, yes. Okay, so we are going to have a listening quiz, reading quiz, a speaking time, and the wrap up, okay? Um, okay, guys, so as a warm up, we are going to start with the following dynamic. Yes, we are going to start with quick fire vocabulary. So this game goes like this. I'm going to give you the category and what you need to do is that you need to tell me as many words as possible in one minute about the category that I will tell you. For example, if I tell you animals, so you need to give me as many animals as possible in one minute you will have the timer right there okay so i need volunteers volunteers huh? thank you okay carlos so you go first okay carlos your category is going to be let me see you know um fruits fruits okay fruits, fruits. Okay. In one minute, okay, go. Oh, let me see. Give me one second. Yes, go. Uh, debo des describir fruta. Uh, just uh, tell me fruits, a lot of fruits, as many as possible. Uh, for example, uh, watermelon. Yes. Uh huh. Is 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 sweet. Okay. Um, Another fruit. Another fruit, Carlos. A great orange, mangoes. Mangoes. 
papaya. Okay, papaya, yes, papaya. it's the same. Ham. Um, strawberry. Mm -hmm. um, lemon. Yes, ham. Um, more. Yes, more, more. More. Okay. Um, um, blackberry. blackberry. Yes, blackberry. Uh -huh. Blackberry. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, uh -huh. Melon. 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 Yes. Melon. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Carla Sofia. <laughs> okay, Carla. <laughs> Okay, so give me, in this case, your category is going to be animals, okay? Animals, go. Uh, dog, cat, mm -hmm. bear. Uh, dog, cat, bear. Uh, dog. Okay, cat. yes. Um. <laughs> Beer or bear? Okay. okay. Beer, okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Carla, animals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Panda. Okay. Panda bear. Okay. Panda bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time is over. Oh my God, Carla, oh. you're five. <laughs> my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Vocabulary. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. So don't worry. Emerson. Emerson. Oh. Hello. Good evening. Okay. Emerson, your category is going to be colors. Colors, okay? Okay, green, red, purple, um, and golden. Mm -hmm. Pink, yellow, mm -hmm. black, mm -hmm. green light. Okay. Turquoise. Turquoise. Silver. Okay. Gray. Okay. Brown. Mm -hmm. Light red. Okay. White. Yes. Only that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. So, so we need to work on vocabulary. Okay. Vocabulary. But very good. Okay, guys. We're going to start with today's class. Yes. Okay. So, yesterday we were covering indirect questions. Yes, no questions. But we are going to recall that knowledge that we uh, got yesterday. Okay. So, let me see. Um. Roberto Esaú, help us reading everything. Hey, okay. Uh, say in, in direct questions, yes. allow for a more polite and, and indirect way of asking or reporting questions, making them uh, suitable for various formal or polite questions. Yes. They are commonly used in interview, business settings, formal correspondence, or okay. when speaking to someone in a higher position or authority. Uh, direct questions. Did you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process? An indirect uh, question. I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. Okay, thank you. Guys, um, well, yesterday we were covering this topic. Um, I need to mention that we have two types of indirect questions. Yes, no questions, okay? 
So we have two types. The first one is the one in which we just ask the indirect question as a normal sentence. Yes, like this. I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. So this one is a normal sentence, but it is called indirect question, okay? Then we also covered um, some examples, right? And you remember that we use phrases like wonder or I would like to know. For example, have you spoken to him? The indirect question, I would like to know if you had spoken to him. Yes. Uh, then we also have the direct question, did he finish his homework? Indirect question, I wonder if he finished his homework, yeah? We also covered this one, which is, I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process, compare it to, did you receive a copy of the analysis for the production process? Okay, you see simple past, simple past. I would like to know if the quality control step should be repeated once the product is finished, compare it to the question, should the quality control step be repeated once the product is finished? So this one is the first type of indirect questions, the ones that are sentences, yeah? Normal sentences, yes? So we have the question, the direct question, but we change that direct question into indirect question, but in reality is like a sentence because it, it is not, um, like a question with the question mark is like a sentence as an indirect question. So in this case, we also have the following examples, right? We also talked about those yesterday, yeah? So we have the direct question, does she speak Greek? The indirect question, I wonder if she speaks Greek, yes? Teacher, and, I, and can I add, instead of wonder, can I add, would like to know, for example, I would like to know if she speaks Greek. Yes, I mean, it is your decision, right? If you want to use wonder, if you would like to use, I would like to know, is your decision. It is not mandatory, right, that you use wonder. No, it, you can use would like to know. And we also have this example, okay? Do you have enough money? I wonder if you have enough money. Does she love chocolate? I wonder if she loves chocolate, right? So as you can see, we have the direct question and the indirect question, but it is like a sentence at the end, yeah? And we have those, do they have any free tickets? I wonder if they have any free tickets. Direct question, did he go to the party? Indirect question, I would like to know if he went to the party. Yeah, we need to um, respect the tense. If you have simple past, then it should go simple past here. Direct question, did Paula buy the tickets? I wonder if Paula bought the tickets. Yes, this is the first type, okay? This is the first type for um, indirect questions. Yes, no questions. This is the first type. But we also have the second type, okay? We have the second type. For the indirect questions, okay, like this, um, that we have this type of questions, yeah? And we can say, will the cost to run a second quality control go very high? And we can say, uh, we can add the subject or we can remove it. I mean, it's not mandatory, okay, that you add a subject. It's not mandatory, you can remove it. And just add, would you mind telling us if the cost to run a second quality control would go very high? And this one is a question. Look at this because we have the question mark right there. So we have the sentence or the question, but at the end, both are called indirect questions, both of them, yes? And we also have the second example. Greg, could you find out if the production manager is around? Compare it to, is the production manager around? You see, we just add this type of phrases and we have those two. 
Is he a Spanish? Can you tell me if he is if he is a Spanish? Or this one. Will she start her new job next week? Can you tell me if she will start her new job next week? Yeah. Now, guys, um, something that we need to be careful with is the following. As you can see, in this case, the subject goes after if. We cannot use will before the subject, okay? It is like a sentence, but at the end, it's a question, okay? So we covered this yesterday. We talked about this yesterday, and we also um, resolved those exercises at the end of the class, if you remember, yeah? So we have the indirect question, yeah, and the direct question. So uh, Roberto, help us reading all of this. Okay. Uh, in direct, can you tell me if she plays tennis? Direct, does she play tennis? Yes. Uh, can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Yes. Does he live in Paris? Yes. Can you tell me if she is hungry? Is she hungry? Uh, can you tell me if you like English? Do you like English? And the last one, can you tell me if they work in Canada? Do they work in Canada? Yes. Okay, very good. So we covered this, okay, yesterday. So this was about indirect questions, yes, no questions. Okay, that was about yesterday. Uh -huh. Now, um, Maybe something that we, that we need to mention, okay, again, is that the indirect question is just for you to sound more polite. That's pretty much, okay? The usage of this is just for you to sound more polite. Then it is the same, almost the same, right? But you sound a little bit more polite, yeah? Now, um, well, this is the information from the book, okay? That this is what we cover it previously, yes? Uh, something is that we need to notice is that if introduces the indirect question, which will have sentence order, subject plus verb. And in this case, the helping verbs like do or does and did are not included in indirect questions, okay? This is very important. We do not include auxiliary verbs in the indirect questions, right? As we can see, Indirect, we don't have does or do or did. We don't have it, right? In the direct, yes. But indirect, no. We do not include them, as it says here, that we do not include, right? And we use if. When we have this type of indirect question, this one, okay, if. Remember that we have two types. Tenemos dos tipos, this one and this one, right? Both. So one, it is with if, and the other one, it starts with would you mind, or could you, or can you, okay? And when it comes to the punctuation, it says, when the introductory segment is a phrase, in this case, I wonder, I would like to know, the resultant statement will take a period and no, a question mark. As I explained before, right? If you start the sentence with a phrase, like I wonder, or I would like to know, so it is a normal sentence and you need to add a period and no a question mark. Now, uh, in this case, if you start the sentence or the question in this case with um, a question, Okay, as you can see, would you mind or could you or can you? We need to add the question mark, as you can see right here. Yes, Juan. Uh, Juan Antonio? Okay. To, to make sense for me, uh, when, when phrase or sentences have a question mark or when, don't, we don't need it. Uh, maybe in the 
in the polite version using would you like or mm -hmm. I want is more reflexive. Uh, I wonder if they have money to pay me. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's like a ref reflex, reflexive mode, not a direct uh, question for uh, for any people or for for a person or, or for okay. personality. Yes. Uh, yes. And so, yes, we can go ahead and actually take um, his point, right? In this case, it could be a, like a sentence which is reflexive, right? It could be, yes. So in this case, uh, we also have the questions that they start with the question, right? As you can see right here, that it could be, would you mind or could you, or as we covered those previous examples, can you, right? It could be also, can you, yeah? Now, um, what other questions um, do you have? Do you have any other doubt right now? So far about what we have covered because we still have another similar topic, okay? So if I need you to please have this clear. Teacher Bath, uh, mm -hmm. both type of the of the question I in the uh, in the right questions uh, use the if mm, yes I mean both of them but what is going to change is that one starts with a phrase and the other one with a uh, I would say it's not a wh but it's um, a question okay it is a question would you mind and could you or can you so in this case, both of them use if, but the difference is just the phrase and the question. But at the end, it depends on you. It depends if you want to use, ask, hey, I wonder if you receive a copy of the analysis, right? I mean, it, it depends on the idea as well, because some ideas will be expressed only with phrases. And other ideas must be expressed with a question. Would you mind telling us, right? Now I can say, hey, would you mind telling us if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process? I can say that. Or I can say, I wonder if you received a copy of the analysis for the production process. Both are correct. It depends on what you want to use and what you would like to transmit yeah okay mm -hmm. but both use if and both are okay if you use them it depends on the idea it depends on what you want to transmit right etc and it depends on which one you find more i would say um i would say easier right easier for you mm -hmm. yes and I think that we all use this. The only thing is that it is the topic itself that is called indirect questions, but you use them. I'm pretty sure that you use them when you ask questions sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, very good. Let's move, okay? And let's um, work on this. Okay, guys. It says, use the introductory phrases and questions to write indirect yes, no questions. Those are the ones that we are covering. Yes, no questions. Indirect yes, no questions. And let's compare the answers. Okay, so let's do it together, okay? Uh, we have the first one already. Can you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing these processes? Number two. Um, we just need to use what is right here and we need to add what is missing, okay? I'd like uh, to know. I like to know. The manufacturer the will buy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will buy. Will buy new much, uh, much, much, machinery. Yes, machinery. 
Yes. Mm. My internet is not to working. To produce or order okay. on time. To produce our orders on time. Is this correct or are we missing something? If after now. If, is this correct? Or no? I would like to know if the manufacturer will buy the new machinery to produce our orders on time, question mark. Is this correct? According to the rules that we have studied. Mm -hmm. You need to ask, Bill, will, between it is the ah, okay let me okay so between if like this like that yeah okay all right well in this case since it is Indirect, yeah, como es indirecta, no, porque aquí lo que hacemos es darle vuelta. Entonces decimos, I would like to know if the manufacturer will buy. I mean, it is okay, this one is okay, but at the same time, it's not okay. Why? Why is not okay? Question mark. Exactly, because of the question mark. Porque no empezamos con una pregunta, es una frase. Entonces, acordémonos que esas no llevan sino de interrogación. Ok. Uh -huh. Lleva nada más. Period. Ok. Bye. Number three. Do you know if the schedule and production control forms complete? Okay, so do you know if the schedule and production schedule. control forms uh -huh. complete? Or okay, are complete. complete? Is this a question mark or a period? Mm, question no, but in this case this is a question a direct question because okay. we are using do you correct so we have to try the uh, transfer to an indirect question okay y como la podríamos cambiar I can say I'd I would like, like to know. know. Okay, I would like to know. So we change that. I would like to know. And if, delete the question mark. Okay, and we delete the question mark. Very good. Can we, can we use another one? Like uh, I was wondering if the if the schedule and production control forms are complete. Yes, you can use that okay. one. Okay. Okay. We can also use, would you mind telling me if the schedule and production control forms are complete? Yes, we can use them all. Uh -huh. Number four. I like to find out how uh -huh. Mm 
the operation plan describe the process paramount. Okay, the operation plan describe the process paramount. Is this okay or are we missing something? Find out if the there. operation. I would like to find out if, right? Period. Very good. Number five. Mm -hmm. I would like to know if. I would like to know if. We go for a small batch. We will go for a small batch or mass production. Okay, period. Okay, very good. Yes. Uh -huh. And the last one. I was wondering. I was wondering. If you. If you. Received the re quotes of the raw material providers. The quotes of the raw material providers. Okay, very good, yes. And the verb will be yes. <laughs> I have a question with yes. the number four. Yes. <laughs> uh, in this case, describe is is in with letter S. Yes, uh -huh. describe. Ah, okay. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Because it's third person. Very good. Yes. Okay. So, guys, basically, this is the topic. I mean, this is part of the topic, okay? So, um, it is kind of easy, but we need to be careful with the period, with the phrases, with the questions, and with uh, the tenses that we use, okay? Do you have any doubt? Uh -huh. No? Okay, perfect. So now let's move. Okay, let's move. Okay, so let's start with the building vocabulary, okay? So we already have the definitions. Yeah, I have added the numbers already, so you can go ahead and just work on pronunciation and vocabulary, okay? Let's see, um, help us reading uh, the, uh, the term and the definition, okay? So number one goes with number one, like that, okay? Number one and two, please, uh, Carlos Vladimir. Number three and four, Wendy. And number five and six, please, uh, George. Number five and six, okay. So number one, what is mix? mix? Yes. Mix. All the raw material are poured. poured in the batch and max and mix. Mm. Two, quality control. A sample are sent to be analyzed to ensure it met a specification. Okay. Mm -hmm. Filter. Hello. Mm. Hello, teacher. Yes, now yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Filter. The body are moving to another machine, machine that pops, uh, pops a cup on every body uh, with the state. Um, okay, Wendy, filter. Number three, so you go here. You read this. Um, uh, mix. No, okay. No. Okay, filter, number three. 
You read uh -huh. this. Read this. Read it. After the bath. Mm -hmm. Is I provide this shampoo is poured in the right amount into empty bottles. 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 Okay, now capping, number four. Oh. The bodily are moved. Are moved. And moved to another machine that pops a cap a cape on every bodily. <laughs> and twist then tight. Okay, twist them twist tight. Them tight. Bottles. Bottles, 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 bottles. 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 Mm, bottles. No, bottles. Con, con R. Bottles. Uh, bottles. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Labeling and packing. Five and six. Labeling. The conveyor belt takes the bottles to the machine where the labels with ingredients and the brand name is took on. boxes and are ready to be sent to the stores okay all right thank you guys um i'm having some issues with it now okay so i can barely hear some of you but okay so labeling yes okay so what is the conveyor belt guys Cinta transportadora. Yes, la cinta, right? La banda. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, yes, I think that basically um, about vocabulary, maybe pronunciation, okay? ED sounds. Approved. Approved. Moved. Yeah, ED sounds. Poured. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, let's move. Now, let's talk about assembly plant. What is an assembly plant, guys? Do you have any idea? What is it? Now? Mm. Okay, and Nelly, help us read in the definition. Okay. An assembly plan, also known, known as assembly line or production plan, is a manufacturing facility where components or parts are brought together and assembled into a final product. It is a crucial state in the production process where various subcomponents are integ integrated mm -hmm. to create a finished finish, finish product. Finished product. Yes. Okay, guys. So an assembly plan, this one is very important. Why? Because actually it's a manufacturing facility where components or parts are brought together and assembled, assembled into a final product. And you have like the example, right? So they are assembled into a final product. Yes. So what is assembled? Assemble means ensemblados, okay? Ensemblados, uh -huh. yes, very good. Okay, now let's move. Which is the difference between assembly line and product plant? Yes, okay, let's see guys. Uh, Roberto Esaú, help us read in please the definition. Yes, I'm having issues with it in the case. Okay. Uh, only the, the definitions. Yes, everything, please. Okay. An assembly line and a production plan are related concepts but refer to different aspects of the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. An assembly line is a specific arrangement of workstations and equipment where a product is systematically assembled in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. a, a production plant refers to 
the entire facility or location where one where manufacturing operations take place, including various uh, various areas and departments involved in production. Okay, thank you. Well, guys, in this case, as you can see right here, the assembly line is this specific workstation, right? Where a product is systematically assembled in a linear fashion, right? This where uh, the type of conveyor belt is used, right? Then we also use uh, the product plan. Well, this one, the product plan refers to the entire facility, right? Yeah, the production plant. So this one is the production plan and this one is the assembly line, okay? Now, uh, let's move and let's talk about the following. I'm going to move you to different breakout rooms, guys, and let me see if I can actually fix the issues with the internet, okay? So I'm going to move you to different rooms and I want you to work on this. So team one, you are going to look for a definition for conveyor belt. Team two, manual labor. Team three, bulk production. And team four, machine hours. Yes? So I will create four teams. Um, give me one second, guys. Okay, let's move. Let me see. Hello. Okay, hello. I think that my internet is better now. Okay, guys, I want you to uh, look for the definition of conveyor belt and explain it to the class, okay? Conveyor belt. That one is going to be your, yes, conveyor belt. Okay, George and Carlos, I want you to look for the definition of bulk production. Bulk production. Hello, teacher, sorry, uh, no oh. escuché porque se me cortó la... Yes, okay. So I want you to look for the definition of bulk production. Okay. Yes, that okay. one. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. I want you to please look for the definition of manual labor. What is it? What is a manual labor? Okay, manual labor. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, manual labor. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. that means. Mm -hmm. Sure. We, yeah. we are the, the team number six. Um, what product mm -hmm. uh, we will to, to describe? Yes, in this case, um, I want you to please try to describe the machine hours, okay? The machine The machine hours. Yes, uh -huh. how does it work, okay, what does it mean, yes? Just a short definition of it. Uh, teacher, this is, yes. uh, that mean horas máquina? Um, um yes but i mean it refers to the assembly line to the process in spanish it's like uh, uh, perdón es como cuando va en la banda tra de transportadora y el trabajador agarra con, su con sus manos el producto y empieza a, a quitarle exceso por ejemplo Mm. Okay, well, in this case, um, it could be, but it also refers, the machine hours is about the operation of, of the machine, 
for the hours that the machine is used. I mean, the schedule. Maybe the time that the machine is, uh, is working? Uh -huh. That would be a good definition. Just, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in manual labor. Mm -hmm. Correct. And what about manual labor? Okay, we, we, we're talking about a manual labor, but I think you talk about machine hour. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, we're talking about machine hours, Luis. Oh, okay. Yes, I am. Okay. Number four. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay, okay, just add the definition. I'll give you two minutes and then I'll call you back, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. The time of the machine is... Okay, Just carrying me. You send the meeting, Nelly? No. Uh, let me. Let me. Uh, uh, a moment, please. Second for meeting. Imagine when moving when you carry objects. We have to, to put the meaning of the others, right? Or only for this one, for cover your belt. It's, it's only this word is for us, for our team. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yes, guys, just that one, okay? Just that one. Uh, okay. Is the airy medium of the belt in their system? Yeah. Okay, you mean. User mm -hmm. for transporting goods for... Mm -hmm. I... I'm saying okay. using... Muy bien, okay, yes. That the definition is kind of better. Using for trans. Um, Use it to move goods and products. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Only <laughs> or or more. Okay, so let's see. Um, so what is a conveyor belt? What is it? Uh -huh. mm, our team. Yes, what is a conveyor belt? Oh, I, I read because okay. it's the very young medium of a belt conveyor system often shortened to bell okay. conveyor. Mm -hmm. uh, the conveyor belt is used to move goods and products that require stability or are large in size. Yeah. Okay. It cannot be transported okay. with roller conveyors. It's okay. Is a bell. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So yes, the conveyor belt is the one that um I will say we use to probably transport right goods that are in large size that are not as you mentioned before. Um, we cannot move them right with. Uh, a normal one. So yes, very good. What is the meaning of bulk production? What is it? Uh, bulk, uh, first, uh, what is the meaning of bulk? Mm -hmm. Bulk uh, refers to a large quantity or mass of, of something. Yes. In the con context of manufacturing, bulk production refers to producing a large quantity of identical products, for example, in the factory, uh, produce uh, the production of clothes, mm -hmm. thousands or thousands of, or, or similar clothes. Very good. Uh, mm -hmm. My partners. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yes, okay, very good. <laughs> yes, don't worry, okay, ball production, okay. Yes, is the production uh, in big quantities, right, bulk. Do you remember that I uh, actually mentioned something about bulk and retail? Yes. Very good, so you know the difference. What about manual labor? What is it? Uh, my team and I uh, think about manual labor. Uh, it's a word that a person uh, do with his own hands. So it's, okay. For example, uh, in in case in some cases, using tools uh, that doesn't use uh, a fuel or electricity. Okay. For example, a hammer, right? Yes. Something like that. Okay. Excellent. Very good. You are correct. And what about machine arts? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, Luis. Okay, Tony. Tony, sorry. 
Oh, oh, I don't know. Her job is, is, is with our team, Liz okay. and Wendy. Okay, Wendy as well, yes. Okay. Machine hour us. is it? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> dele, 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 dele. No, tell, tell us, please. You first. <laughs> machine hours is the time the machine being in operation or working. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, it's the time when the machinery is working. Yes, very good. Okay, guys, th those are just terms, right? Um, that we need to learn to, uh, because they are related to the product line, right? And of course, they are really useful. Yes. All right, now more vocabulary. Okay, we have weld, we have a screw, we have tighten. We have adjust and we have a screw. Okay, what is a weld? What is a weld, George? What is weld? Well, it is to join two pieces of metal or plastic by heating so the edge come together. Very good. Okay. Uh, well, in Spanish, would be? Soldar, soldadura. Very good. What about screw? What is a screw? Um, Carlos Vladimir? To attach one su surprise to another using a screw. Yes, to attach Sur one surface. Surface. Yes, to another using a screw. What is a screw then? Tornillo. Yes. Okay. Very good. Well, in this case, the verb is. ¿Cuál es el verbo? Atornillar. Atornillar. Very good. Number three. What is the meaning of tighten? Number three. Emerson. The term and object as a crew until it sit and it can it do term anymore. Yes, very good. What is the meaning then of tighten, guys? Ajuste. Yes, it's um, ajustar, right? Ajustar, equal means also asegurar, right? Very good. Um, number four, adjust. What is adjust, Tony? To move an object slightly so that it is in the right place so it fits better yes very good okay and what is as true jonathan is jonathan there hello no yes oh yes jonathan what is as true Number two. Number five. five. Yes. Five. Is I read the, the point of yes, the definition. Okay. A point piece of metal with twist part on it called thread. Instead of hiring with the with a hammer, you push and turn in order to fasten fasten pieces. Of metal of wood together. Okay. Uh, okay, so a pointed piece, okay, pointed, yeah, twisted, thread. Um okay, yes. A, a screw is common. A screw. A screw true. is uh true. El, true. El, yeah. El tornillo. Correct. Okay. Un tornillo. Teacher, a screw. And, yes. and then what is the difference between screw and a screw? Yes, this one is the verb and this one is the noun. So this one is atornillar and this one Screwing. is tornillo. Uh -huh. But but do you do you don't need to um, add the ing to the verb screw screwing? Depends on the tense that you are using. Mm -hmm. I screw, you screw, we screw, we are screw screwing. 
A screw is the bird. Yes. In Spanish, for this, we say atornillar y desatornillar. In English, it's something like that. So, uh, um, screwing. Correct. Screwing and screw. Yes, correct. A screw and unscrew. Unscrew. Yes. Unscrew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh -huh. a screw, atornillar, unscrew, desatornillar. UN. In... UN. Un, un, UN. Un, un, unscrew. UN. Okay. Unscrew. Very good. Very good. Okay, guys. Any other doubt? No? Okay. Now, let's move then. Okay. And now, let's start with how to use indirect questions information questions okay we covered yes no questions but now we are going to cover information questions indirect questions information questions okay guys um we use them almost the same it's almost the same the only difference is the following okay luis help us read in the definition The indirect question, information question, allow you to inquire about a specific information indirectly, often, often in a more polite or tactful man, manner. 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 Yes, guys. Which is the difference with the yes, no questions? Well, I mean, the other ones is just for you to say yes or no. And this one, you need to add extra information. That is the only difference, yeah? And also the, the words that we use. So basically, as you can see right here, okay, the examples of phrases that we can use, okay, I wonder, I would like to know, would you mind, would you let me know? But this time, since, since we are talking about information questions, we are going to use, WH, what, when, what time, how much, etc. Yes. Look at this. The direct question, example one. When will he come? The indirect information question should be I wonder when he will come. And this one is a WH. I mean, is this one? This one? But look at this. We do not follow the structure, right? So we, we switch, movemos, yes? Yes, when he will come. I wonder when he will come. Indirect question. Now we have number two. What does she study? I would like to know what she studies. Uh, WH. Uh, yes. What time does the train depart? Yeah. So would you mind telling me what time the train departs? How much will you pay? Would you let me know how much you will pay? WH. You use add like the phrase. Yes. And if you start with a question like would you mind or would you let me know, we need to add a question mark. Yeah. And if not, use the period. Yes. And we do not use the auxiliary do or does, right? But we use will. But what we do is that we just add it after the subject. It's like a sentence, guys. Es como una oración. Teacher, I don't understand when, please. Could you repeat when I use the question mark and when 
I use the the point or, or the, the, the period. The period. Yes, of course. So the period is whenever you start the sentence with a phrase. And what we call a phrase is I wonder and I would like to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It's when you start with the WH uh, question, is necessary the question mark. Okay. Correct. Yes, like that. Mm -hmm. When you, you use I. Mm -hmm. When you use you... I at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Correct. Mm, all right. Yes. Um, let me see. Let's move. Okay. This is from the book. This is from the book. The same information, right? Look at this. I wonder what the two pieces I need to weld are. Compare it to what are the two pieces I need to weld. The question, the indirect question with the phrase, I wonder. Yeah. Look at this. When will the provider send the order of a screws? Indirect, I would like to know when the provider will send the order of the screws. Yes. With phrases, phrases. I would like to know and I wonder. Now questions. Would you mind telling us how much the provider charges to process the order? How much does the provider charge to process the order? And the last one, would you let me know what time the first batch is expected to be complete? Compare it to what time is the first batch expected to be complete? You see, I mean, um, it's almost the same, but in this case, we use WH in the middle. Yes. Do you have questions? What other doubts do you have? ¿Qué otras dudas tienen? Uh -huh. No? Okay. So now, then, let's move. Okay. What we are going to do is the following. I need you to change, okay? I need you to change the direct questions into indirect information questions, information, the ones that we just covered. So you have the direct question, and I need you to please change those four to indirect information questions. Okay, let's do it individually here in the main room. Okay, let's do it. Okay, think about number one. And if you have the answer, tell me or send it to the chat, either or, okay? Teacher, can you show me the last? Uh, yes. The last. For a screenshot. The, yes, of course. Uh, this one? Yes. Okay. Give me a second. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let's move. Okay. Okay, let me see number one. I would like to know when they canceled the meeting. Very good, yes. 
Okay, yes, we have one possible answer and that is correct. Number one, I would like to know when, okay, Jonathan, you were missing the idea. I wonder if they cancel the dinner. Emerson, ahí le falta la WH. Okay. Uh -huh. I wonder the I wonder when they cancel the meeting. Uh -huh. When they cancel. Yes, very good. Okay. I would like to know when they cancel the meeting. Yes, Carlos. Omar, yes. I would like to know why you need for the team building. I would like to know what you needed. Mm, but in this case, okay, uh, Roberto Esau, but, um, no, okay, Carla Sofia. I would like to know what you need for the team building session. It is partially correct because you added the question mark and it is not a question. Um, would you let me know what you need for the team building session? Very good, Roberto, yes. Emerson, I would like to, ah, aquí le falta el verbo. I would like to know, oh no, I would like to know what you, Ah, muy bien. Need, como fíjese en la, en la pregunta, Emerson. So, uh, the question number two is going to be simple present. It's not past. Number one is past, but number two is not simple past, it's simple present. So, the verb is just need. I would like to know what you need for that team build this building session. Would you mind telling me when they cancel the meeting? Very good. Yes, Bernardo. I would like to know when they cancel the meeting. Pablo, the same thing. Como um, empieza con una frase, tiene que ser un period, un punto, no un question mark, porque es una frase con la que está empezando. Um, Okay, let me see. Would you let me know what you need for the team building session? Okay, this one. Okay, this one is number two. Okay. Okay, that one is number two. Let me see. Very good, Pablo. Would you mind telling me what time he sent the report? Would you mind what he is? Very good, yes. Very good, Roberto. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the last one, guys. Okay. 
Yes, very good. Carlos Omar. I would like to know how much the watch costs. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Okay. Bye. All right, guys. Look at the at the at the, um, at the answers. Okay. Number two is right here. Okay. So um. Okay, for number one. We have direct, when did they cancel the meeting? Indirect, I would like to know when they canceled the meeting. Teacher, in this case, because we have an auxiliary verb, we don't need it in the indirect, but we need to change the, the time of the verb. Correct, we need to change the time of the verb. Yes, to know that is in past. Mm -hmm. Now, with number two, what do you need for the team building session? Look at the, at the answer. Would you let me know what you need for the team building session? Question mark, because we start with a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Number three, what time did he send the report? Would you mind telling me what time he sent the report? Same thing, we change the verb and we don't use the auxiliary. Teacher, excuse me. In yes. The second, in the second, when you say, uh, will you let me know what you need? Why do you, why we don't use the verb do? What you do, what you do you need? What do you need? Because in this case, since this one is the indirect and remember that with the indirect, it says that we don't use do, does, nor did. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, okay, very good. So now, and we have the last one. How much does the watch cost? I would like to know how much the watch costs. We don't use the auxiliary, but we use the third person. If I try to use wonder, maybe the example is, I wonder how much the watch costs. Yes. Or or do you need to include like to know? No. I wonder how much the watch costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Any other idea or any other um, opinion, guys? No? Okay. Now, let's choose the correct option. Okay, number one, I have no idea 